A reference to Corkman Ronan Murphy, Group Chief, Chief Executive with Smart Tech. I just want to stay with this for another little while. Pat Phelan contributed an awful lot, but I want to get Ronan's take on this. He's been on the air with us on a number of occasions in the past. Ronan, good morning. Good morning, Neil. Firstly, I, you clearly didn't hear Pat Phelan. He's I mean, an incredible wealth of knowledge, and I thank him for it. He mentioned that you're you're right in the centre of all of this right now, are you? Yeah, we are. We um, well, we, we operate cybersecurity operation centres across the world, and um, uh, a lot of the very big tier one um, hospitals in Ireland are our clients. So we've been um, we've been working twenty four seven since. Um, since Thursday night, um, early Thursday night, um, uh, until now, and there's a there's a bit a bit of a way left to go in this. It's a, I, I would say Neil, um, in, I've been in, in this game a long time, and this is by far the most significant cyber attack I would say the world has ever seen. Um, is it because, and Pat Phelan says, I'm paraphrasing now, that they're running Windows XP, which is to be kind, an ancient system. Um, it, it, look, that's a problem. That is a problem. It's not the cause of this, but it is a problem. Look, any company, any organisation that's using vulnerable technologies is going to be have a higher chance of having uh, a cyber attack. But in this specific case, the legacy operating systems were not the the, the cause of this. Um, the profile of this is a little bit different, right? And this is important in so far as that. Um, Somebody was fished, right? These guys, they're, they're, they're a Russian gang. I've dealt with them many times. They're, they, they, they fish you, right? They send you an email. Somebody clicks on the link. And once they get in, they establish what we call as a CMC command and control, right? They, get, they, 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 they have a communication into the network. And then they, they've got very, very skilled, uh, a skilled team who will execute some scripts within the network, uh, COBOL strike and um, uh, various different techniques. And irrespective for the most part on your, your systems, they are very proficient in their ability to navigate around the network and to do their, um, to do their, their, their execute their techniques. And unfortunately, um, that's the case that the HSE finds themselves in. These guys are, are very proficient. Now, look, Pat is in absolutely 100% right. I mean, if you've got lots, look, lots of legacy systems, XP and all that, you have a bigger problem in your your channel. But you're using a very kind word. You call it legacy systems. Others would call them outdated old systems. That's true. That's true. And it's it's look it's 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 shocking. But but there there's bigger problems here as well, right? Um it's not always that simple for the health service because it's actually very similar in pharmaceutical I would say. They have got lots of equipment for CAT scanning and dialysis and cancer treatments. And these these machines, big they're almost like manufacturing machines to a degree. I mean, you've been in a CAT scan machine or an X-ray machine before. They're manufactured by companies like GE. And because of how they were built, a lot of the technology that runs them only works with specific operating systems and therefore they, they need to use older technologies. So I'm not trying to make an excuse, by the way. But in healthcare of all industries, it can be very, very difficult to upgrade systems. So, look, banks do it though, don't they? We don't hear of a bank being asked for a twenty million euro ransom this morning. Um, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Banks have challenges too. I okay. mean, banks, okay. pl- banks have banks have plenty of challenges. Um, so, look, the systems they they are behind the curve. Path entirely, one hundred percent correct there. And um, they they do need to invest. The government does need to make more substantial investment in upgrading their infrastructure. It is way behind, but it was not the cause of this. Okay. This would have happened even if their their systems were a little bit newer. I would say. Okay, so even if they had up to date kick ass tech and security and firewalls and everything that they needed, somebody still would have kicked and opened a PDF attachment. You say. Well, security is a different conversation then, right? Security, if they, the security obviously was not up to scratch. Um, therefore, they were compromised. Um, but why, conversation. why isn't the government employing companies to protect the state against all of this? Or is it just inevitable that this is, that they're one step ahead of us all of the time, the cyber criminals? Um, I mean, so last week in the US, you had this big piece of critical infrastructure. The Colonial Pipeline was hacked 
by a Russian gang called Dark Side. Petrol. The yeah. follow the fallout from that was incredibly profound. I mean, there was three states in North America went into a state of emergency because they couldn't get fuel. You saw people filling up buckets with, with diesel and petrol and so forth. So on the back of that, Joe Biden on Thursday night issued an executive order to all U.S. government bodies saying you now need to 45 days to double down and improving in, in, in your cybersecurity and your monitoring and your infrastructure and all that good stuff. I believe Ireland will have to follow suit. It'll have to be um, become a regulatory uh, conversation for for every government agency whereby, as Pat said, they upgrade their infrastructure, they improve their security, they train their people, because right now, I mean, what has happened is so profoundly insane, the scale of this attack. I mean, I've, I've never seen a bigger attack on a country in the middle of we're in the midst of a pandemic and they've taken the health service for an entire country yeah, down. I think they probably knew that being in the midst of a pandemic might force payment faster. You'd wonder whether it would make sense to get somebody to come from the dark side, one of the cyber criminals, to flip and to teach us how we can protect ourselves from his buddies and his cohorts. I mean, I know that's the stuff of yeah, well, movie, well, we, movies, I mean, maybe. We, we, we know how to stop it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of talk out there saying that this was unstoppable. It wasn't unstoppable. These are stopped every single day. I mean, millions of them are stopped. And it's okay. You must remember that in this battle against these guys, you have to be right all the time. It's high stakes poker. They only need to be right once. And if they're right once, and if your house isn't in order and you haven't made the investment and your systems aren't updated and you don't have the ability to implement this, this, the security monitoring and so forth, you find yourself in the predicament that that you're in now. I think people would be raging to hear, though, that, you know, I know I've said it already, but that the systems are certainly, um, you know, to be kind, old. Yeah. What what happens with regards to whether one should pay or not? Just dwell on that for a moment. Um, Does that that make any sense? Yeah. Uh, Look, it's it's the eternal debate, right? So I'll start off by saying I'm an advocate for not paying. I don't believe you should pay. But there's another line of thought that it should be debated. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you shouldn't pay. That line of thought is that if you pay, the, these guys have a reputation to uphold um, and they've got a very substantial business. They collect hundreds of millions of dollars every year. By people so paying pay, them then? Correct, by people paying them. So if you pay, you will get your data decrypted. They do decrypt, I've dealt with it many, many, many times. And because if they don't, right, they're going to put themselves out of business at the end of the day, it's about money, they're business people, they're well, they're scrupulous criminals, but they're also business people. So if you pay them, you will get the decryption keys back and you will get to decrypt your, your network and so forth. There's a bigger problem here, and this is the, where the debate comes in. And because the hospitals are frontline and they need to deliver care and... Um, the inability to do that, it's literally a life and death conversation. So expediting that, what's the value you place on that? But secondly, and very importantly, these guys, Wizard Spider, who've perpetrated the crime, have indicated that they've exfiltrated 700 gigabits of data, which is a huge repository of patient data or healthcare data. And their tactic is that they dump that data publicly if you do not pay. Yeah. It's called the double extortion trend. So what you have to consider now is when this whole thing of paying or not paying is brought up, right, is that we need to get our systems back up and running. This is life and death. And there's also the consideration of what happens if this data is made public, if they have taken it, and what's the cost we put on that. So again, I say you don't pay. Have you dealt with companies who have paid? I made a payment last week for a company. You made a payment? I made a payment last week for a company in Saint Pe- for a company in Asia for, to a bunch of hackers in Saint Petersburg. I negotiated with them. How much? Um, we a million euros. Good God! Um, so we negotiated the payment. They released um, we, the. They they unblocked the systems then. Yeah, they fully unblocked, fully decrypted. And, all the keys were given. And how do you know that they won't come back to your client again? Because that client is now a soft touch. 
Uh, it, see, typically with these guys, the clients, we know exactly how they got in. We know exactly how they exploited them. The clients now made the investment to harden all of those weak spots within their infrastructure. There's no guarantee they won't come back. I doubt the client will get caught again. And um, based on where they had holes in their environment, they've now doubled down and hardened all that and fixed it and secured it. So um, they might come back again. I can't guarantee they won't. I um, mean, this specific in, uh, this, this specific case, the client decrypted their data. They got back up and running. I told them not to pay. I don't believe they should have paid. They funded a criminal organization by paying and they put that organization in a position where um, they're going to go and commit more of these crimes. Um, but they've saved their business. Now, there's an ethical conversation to be had. There's, um, there's, there's you know, it's... it's, 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 it's but we're it's not, but you, you don't know whether Ireland is having that conversation about pay or not pay? I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay. I, I mean, it's been indicated by Michael Martin and the government that they will not pay. Um, you know, it's, 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 I know we know the ransom has been made. They're looking for $20 million. Um, and that $20 million is based on two things. It's, the decryption keys of the data and it's the promise to not dump the data publicly okay, okay. Um, and, and they'll, they'll have to get to the bottom of that and how long will how, okay let's say they don't negotiate and they want to fix it and there are people like you helping how long will that take? You, you'll, you'll have a shelf life of a week on this and after a week you'll typically um, the bad guys will know that the game is up that they're not going to pay because they've absorbed all the cost of the the, the efforts of trying to reinstate their, their networks and so forth. So it's about a week typically from from when the negotiations start, which I would anticipate if negotiations have or have not started would have been possibly uh, yesterday. So you're probably going to have a week. Um, it's probably highly unlikely the Irish government will, will pay. And then they will just dump it on the dark web and that'll be everyone's passwords and personal details and clinical records and medical care and health care and everything. So we do, they, they, it's important, Neil, we don't know the profile of the data that okay. they're uh, claiming to have taken. They're okay. saying it's 700 gigs from the HSE, but nobody knows what that actually is. Okay. It'd be good to stay in touch with you um, in the coming days if you're not too busy, Ronan, just to, in case there are developments. But I really appreciate you stepping out. Thanks for taking the call for now. Appreciate it. Neil, just, just one point, and it, look, I think it's, it's probably worth noting as well. There's, there's been significant demands coming in over the last 12 hours from North Korea, where they're targeting all of our internet service providers um, with distributed denial of service attacks. What's that mean? Um, it's where they're trying to knock their, they're threatening, threatening to knock their systems offline from Friday. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's, it's quite worrying to see. You're just uh, saying there that North Korean criminals are attacking Irish businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, the Lazarus Group have started. We've just put it out on Twitter this morning. They started all this week. They've been doing. Um, they've been sending ransom demands to internet service providers who provide your your internet and so forth, threatening to take them down from Friday if they don't start paying them uh, Bitcoin. So there's been we've been observing a number of those attacks. We've seen some of the ransom notes now coming through to those service providers. Had a good conversation this morning with Jerry Swinging, Cork Internet Exchange, about it. Um, uh, they're they're indicating that from Friday they're going to ramp up their attacks on those internet service providers. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the... Well, it'll be interesting to see where the internet sub- suppliers who provide us with our own personal and business broadband and Wi-Fi, whether they pay. Well, they won't pay. They, 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 they definitely won't pay. And they, they, should have, they should have capabilities in situ to deal with these kind of denial of service attacks. But it just shows how prevalent this problem is becoming. And as Pat said, it's been driven by cryptocurrency and the value of cryptocurrency. Um, so it's, it's, it's we're, we're, I mean, it feels like the country's on a war footing right now. Incredible. Thank you, Ronan. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you for Thank taking you. the call. On a war footing, Ronan Murphy, Chief Exec with Smart Tech. Neil Prendeville, the voice of Cork. Weekdays 9 to 12. Cork's Red FM. Red FM.